It's time for Twig. This week in Google, Jeff and Gina are here. We're going to take a look at, well, there's so much to talk about, including this really big phone and the furor over PATH. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by CashFly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 133, recorded February 8th, 2012. My phablet has a spin. This Week in Google is brought to you by... Go to my PC. Take care of last minute requests from anywhere, right from your phone, with the Go to My PC app for iPhone. Visit gotomypc.com for your free 30 day trial. Use the offer code TWIG. And buy Carbonite online backup. Automatic, continuous, unlimited backup for your computer files. Only $59 a year. Try it free at carbonite.com. Use the offer code TWIG and get two bonus months with purchase. It's time for TWIG. This week at Google Soon with brand new, better music and album art that actually has people's faces on it. Hello, I'm Leo Laporte. Do you really hate the music, Gina Trapani? I don't hate it. I don't think it adequately communicates. You want something more rock and roll, don't you? How dynamic and modern we all are. <laughs> I had It was high concept. It was a big mistake. I, I wanted to go with uh, a fugue or a round... Or, a, you know, cantata, something that would imply the three voices intertwined. It was too high concept. It was a high thinking. Too bad. I think idea. it was a mistake. I think it might no, just it was be, a terrible we might mistake. be ready for an upgrade. It isn't a fugue, Dave. I couldn't find a fugue. I could only get what I could get. It's, that's the other thing is licensable classical performances are few and far between. Ironic. Isn't that mm -hmm. ironic? That is Gina Trapani. She is the founder of Lifehacker. The blogger at smarterware.org, the author of Think Up Act, app, <laughs> Think Up App, <laughs> at thinkupapp.com. That's and me. And the author of The Complete Guide to Google Wave. Oh. I'm sorry, that hurt. That was, that okay. was a low blow. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Path, Good to be Path here. Told My me favorite all of that. hour of the week begins Yay. now. Hey, Gita. It, it would be even more your favorite hour if we had spaghetti and meatballs, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> or Chipotle. Oh, man. Spaghetti <laughs> meatballs here in California. I try not to think about it too much mm, because uh, I'm far away from Brooklyn. Sunday gravy. Oh, Sunday gravy. Sunday gravy, baby. Yeah, and I got to book a flight home. <laughs> 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 oh, me too. We Italians, we don't, get, we don't stray far from the True. ragu pot. <laughs> also here, Jeff Jarvis, who's, sitting, who's standing in for the verst and the best. Jeff is uh, Jeff, Jeff is buzzmachine.com. He's also uh, the author of Public Parts, brand new. And uh, the author also of What Would Google Do? Hello, Jeff. Hello, hello, hello. Professor of journalism. Teaches the new journalism to young people. Ah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm leading them astray down, down I, over the cliff. Does the administration ever say people. that? Does the administration ever say, uh, yeah, Jeff, could you, <laughs> could you do more with printing presses? I met David Carr. I knew him before, but I was I was at a dinner last week at Clay Shirky's. Oh, with David man. Carr, and yeah, I know. <laughs> and David Carr from the that's New York a, Times. Was there. In a, fact, he wrote a, a blog name post drop. Today. I'd love to drop, I know, isn't it? So, so David wrote a, a blog post today about the about the bread he we all had at Clay's, and, mm. and he mentioned no one else in the meeting. But I was telling the story of going to the Gutenberg Museum on my um, pilgrimage there, and Carr. You could see the joy come in his face. He said, "So." Is that the print last print guy you liked? <laughs> <laughs> what fun. That sounds like a great dinner party. Who else was yeah, there? That sounds um, like a good party. Uh, Emily Bell from The Guardian. Oh. Uh, Janine Wilson from The Guardian. Oh. Um, and uh, It's all the media. All the media matters types. What it was. And Cindy Stiver is the new editor of the Columbia Journalism Review. Holy uh, cow. Clay, Jay Rosen, who couldn't be there, Emily, and I were all skewered by the Columbia Journalism Review as the right. future news consortium. The, the cabal. Right. And the, so I had the idea of, of having the new editor, Cindy Stivers, uh, over for, uh, somewhere for dinner um, to brainwash her. Brilliant. And so we didn't do any of that. We just drank and ate delicious bread that Clay makes. So Clay makes his he own He makes bread. his own, huh? It's really good. 
Boy, that's and on top, true. On top of everything else, on top of understanding the whole world and the universe mm -hmm. and everything else, he makes good bread. I actually yeah. am a very good baker, but I had to stop because okay. when you make a nice, hot, fresh yeah. loaf of bread, there's only one thing to do, which is slather it with butter and devour it whole. The yeah. entire thing. And mm -hmm. I've already got a problem there, so it was just not good. <laughs> what kind of bread does he make? Uh, just, just a simple, low, low, you know. A baguette? Um, I got, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, my really mom, uh, one of the reasons I do this is my mom, my entire life growing up, would make spaghetti and meatballs. We'd have antipasto beginning the meal. We'd oh. have, and then, we, and she'd home and homemade uh, baguettes every every meal. Oh, oh. man. Meats and cheeses <laughs> and olives so and good. Bread. Oh, anchovies. Eat. Oh, I love that stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Mm hmm. But that's not what we're here to discuss, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this week in diets. This week in path. I, uh, I, you know, boy, there was a lot of uh, gnashing of teeth over path uploading. Uh, path is the app that, uh, the, uh, the reason this is uh, big is because path is the app that all the technorati use, the digerati use. Um, and so I don't know if real people use it, but they, we all use it. And so it really was offensive to our sensibility. This is the Dave Morin, the guy who worked at um, Facebook, left Facebook to start this uh, company. And it's kind of like Facebook. It's a the path through your life, a journal of your life uh, in pictures, text, music. You tell everybody, you tell the world when you wake up. Not actually, not the world. No more than 150 friends. Uh, when you wake up, when you go to sleep, all that stuff. And I love it. And I've only got like 60 friends and I know all of them. Uh, Alex Lindsay's rule of thumb on path is you only add people that you would have at a dinner party. So it really is, it's like what Facebook was supposed to be, kind of. And you can cross-post on Path to Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Foursquare. So you're not, you know, often I'll, I'll cross-post, but I just love it. So it, when you, you know, sign up for Path or at any point thereafter, you have the opportunity to find friends on Path to add friends. And they have three places you can add them from. Contacts, Facebook, or invite them. So it's two places. When you type, when you press contacts, what does it do? Well, somehow it figures out which of the people in your address book are on path. How would it do that? Now think, a little thought experiment. Does it download the entire database of path users to your phone? No. No. And check on the phone? No. Any program and every I, most social this programs do this on for years. Any Facebook's program, done Google's done it. It has to because if you think about it, be the programmer for a moment. How do you solve this problem? I have two lists: a list of my address contacts and a list of everybody who's on Path. How do I figure out where the intersection is? Either I have to, I don't know, one by one, Path on the phone has to go through the contact list and compare it to the database. No, it uploads the whole thing. Boom! Does a fast comparison, downloads it. So some uh, some smart person for some reason i love his uh, blog name mclovin m c l o v dot i n mclovin uh noticed this well though mclovin you're significant you're so obviously sophisticated technically what did you think it was doing but then why did anybody even tie on with it it started spreading around because I most people aren't sophisticated enough to figure out that of course they're all doing that well, so so I think there's some interesting things here. Uh, first, first there's the the permissions model of Android and iPhone. Now, I haven't installed Path. When you install it, you know, if you were installed on an Android, it would say this app would need access to your address book, and lots of apps do, mostly because they want you want to be able to quickly you're easily share. I actually I don't have a problem with an app having access to my address book, but the idea that Path is uploading my entire address book and keeping it on their servers to monitor. You know, hey, well, that's the question. Do they keep on. it? That's the issue is the retention. Yes, they keep it on their servers. They they maintain an up-to-date database of your contacts on their servers Ah, continuously. so it can notify you when friends oh, and family join it. Death. Exactly. Now, that uh, uh, that is uh. something that I – that's that's different in my book than, hey, you can have access to my address book to quickly call someone. Because when, or... when you add your mistress to it, you don't know that it's going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have ever had or ever can. Oh, have let one. me tell you, it's fun. Yeah. So, but the, but I have to say the issue is really more one of disclosure, yes, than it is of oh my god, it does this. Well, when, when on Facebook silence. you do the same thing, right? On Facebook it says well, if you want to find friends, and well, then you 
Gina, you're you a are? programmer. How would you solve this? You could, I guess, well, uh, uh, saving it's another matter. But how would you go through a contact list on a phone and compare it to the database on the path servers? You'd either one by one have to compare, which is going to take right. forever, or you just upload the whole thing. You do a quick comparison on the server and, and flag matches. Now, what you should do is you should say somewhere, in, it doesn't obviously not through the Android or iPhone disclosure because neither of those are complete enough, but you should say in your privacy policy, we will do this, and if you save it, which maybe they shouldn't have done, but if we will save it and we'll do the comparison and you're giving us permission if you use Path. But you have yeah. to do that. Yeah, I mean, technically, it is it is easier an easier way to do it, and it is an issue of disclosure. You can't do it with hashes, folks, because it, they are not all exact matches. You have to. You cannot do it with hashes. You have to have a grep, I think. Right. Well, one of the suggestions that someone made uh, was that they could pass this information. They could hash the, the the email addresses when they send them across. But you know, this is. Well, they shouldn't send it in the clear. Itself. That's a mistake right, as well. It's not over an encrypted connection anyway. Right. I think the idea is just that Path is maintaining your address book on their servers, and, and, you're, and you're not aware of that. Were you, were you aware of that, Leo? No, like, no, no. Now, no, so, although so the pieces, minute Path says, oh, your mom just joined Path, a light bulb should go off if you're yeah. thinking, oh, well, how, does she, how do they know that? They must be saving my mom's email address somewhere. Right, right. So uh, now I, I'm kind of new, relatively new to iOS after several years of straight Android. And Android has a, I think, has a really clear permissions model. When you install an app, it tells you what the app needs access to. I think it could be more granular, and I wish that I could opt out of certain things, uh, you know, one by one. But whatever. iPhone does not up. do that. iPhone does not do that. Apple uh, is, is supposed to keep track of that, and, and Apple's supposed to keep track yeah. of that, right? So, so. You know, so a few I saw a few people make the point that they wish that the Apple review process had caught this, um, that this possibly could go against Apple's terms of service, mm -hmm. uh, that you're not supposed to store this contact information. I don't know if that's actually true. And in fact, I should try and find the try, try and find the link where I saw that. Uh, but and I think it's actually on the the original post by the the guy who did the network monitoring to see what was going across. I, I don't. I don't blame Path. I actually think that Path's apology was very well done, and I applaud them for saying they're deleting all this contact information off their servers. They're saying, we're sorry. We made a mistake. Like Based on your feedback, we've realized that we shouldn't have done this without being more communicative. We're deleting all the contact data that we've collected thus far from our servers. That's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty good apology. Uh, so I applaud them for that. For me, this was just a bigger question about how do mobile apps communicate exactly what they're doing and why to you. And in a way that is usable and reasonable and clear, but not, you know, a 40 page terms of service or privacy policy. This is a hard, this is a very difficult. Well, this, but this is, this is a UI problem to some extent. I think, Gina, you're right. It's, it's, it's disclosure, but, but disclosure is UI in this case, where what we need is this notion of the data vault. And you have an easy means. You say, okay, you're allowed in, and here's how you're allowed in, and, 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 and not. And, and if we don't do that as an industry, we're going to get, I'm sorry, I wasn't going to bring it up this week, but we're going to get things like the European rules coming where they get draconian about saying you may only gather the minimum data for the minimum amount of time. And that to me is, is very chilling on innovation and chilling on knowledge and other things, but that's where they've gone and, and, and that's the extreme of where they can go and probably will go uh, unless we have a better structure where people say, I get it. Yeah, 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 it's fine. Sure, because I said, okay. And that's, to me, privacy is being, you know, privacy by design is one of the great um, buzzword, buzz phrases of, of late. But to me, that's, that's a misnomer because it starts at the end of the process. The beginning of the process is, I want to share. I want to find friends. Okay, says Path. Great, we'll help you do that. Here's how, but here's what you're doing along the way. And privacy policies aren't the way to do that. Privacy laws aren't the way to do that. The UI is the way to do that. Yeah. Right. I agree. So it's really an issue uh, from a technical point of view. I think probably fa I'm sure I know everybody does this because it's the simplest way to do it. Somebody's saying you could hash, and it's true. You could hash on the phone. You could hash all the email addresses, upload the hash, and compare them with a hash uh, on the uh, on the path side. Uh, I can see why they would choose not to do that. It's computationally intensive, uh, and they probably just didn't think because I'm sure Facebook and everything else does. If you're gonna if you're gonna search your contact list. For matches, that's what's going to happen. That's right, yeah. right. In, in the that's really the right message here. I want to get out to people is, well, how did you think they were doing it? Right. I think you're right. Right, right. right.
But I mean, the, the Apple's terms of service, section 17.1, apps cannot transmit data about a user without obtaining the user's prior permission and providing the user with access to so information about how and where the data Perfect. Will be used. So it is a violation. There so should be a big box argue. that says, you're, we are now going to upload your contact list to our servers where we will compare it with our members list. We will store this for future reference. If you choose not to do this, press cancel. I think that I would think, have been I the way they, to do it. I think it. they understood, except for the storing part. I think that they presumed that people would presume this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, people aren't and that I think you're right, too, is that uh, in our world, probably would people would presume it, but obviously others don't. Right. Yeah, yeah, a geek would know. Although I, I didn't think about it. <laughs> I was actually I didn't think about it till I read the art, all these, all this uh, outrage, and I thought, well, yeah, oh. of, I, of course right. they're, they're doing that. But it's interesting. So I wonder how Apple's going to respond. So the response from uh, Dave is, "We blew it. We're sorry. We're going to delete it," which will actually eliminate uh, some functionality of Path, which is to path let you know your friend is now on Path. Which is a big deal. Which I like. Well, so I, what I'd like is the update. choice. Right. There's an update that will involve some better communication and choice about oh, it. Oh, I see this. In Path yeah. 2.0.6, released to the App Store today, mostly probably in, to be in compliance with Apple's own policy, you're prompted to opt in or out of sharing your phone's contacts with our servers. If you accept and later decide you would like to revoke this access, send an email to service at path.com. Is that, is that is sufficient? Email us. And we'll delete it. First, I think it's I think it's funny that they said sharing your phone's contacts with our servers as if yeah. the machines themselves were, were an entity. We, our servers, we would like, like to, to share our my data with servers. your servers. <laughs> and maybe it's because, and I have to admit, I love Path and I love Dave. Uh, although I've given Dave a hard time in the past when he was at Facebook. In fact, he remembered that, which I felt bad about. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I I think he's great, and I think I think I don't think he's nefarious. So oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't put the story in the rundown because I think that path was no, being it's a big story. I, I think that their apology was remarkable. I think this is a bigger issue about disclosure and what our expectations are. When a mobile app says it needs access to your address book, do you expect that that means they're uploading all your contacts to their server? To me, I expect that that means, um, you know, they're going to say, oh, this person on Twitter is also the, you know, this is the phone number that you have for this person or, you know, d data right. sharing or, or kind of mash data together or give me an easy way to email someone or, or phone someone from within the app. That's well, what that translates to, to I me. Agree. To me, that, that sounds, I assume that it's client side. If I got a notification from Path, I said, oh, hey, your, your mom joined, just joined Path. It would ring a little mm -hmm. bit of a bell. And I'd say, oh, how, how did they? But you can't expect regular good. people to do that. Right, right. And, and I would think, well, maybe the, you know, maybe the app is running in the background. You know, maybe there's right. an asynchronous task going on in the background that's, that's, that's doing the check. It's not that difficult to check, you know, to send so an that's, email. So that's a really right? good point. Because we can think of credible, maybe not preferable, but credible ways to do this without uploading and storing data. Right. Then really that does mean you've got to tell us if you're going to do this. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that would be efficient. It would use a lot of bandwidth. It would, you know, it might slow down your phone. I, they're all good technical reasons why they did the, what they did the way they did it. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not blaming Path. I'm not saying that they, they did it the wrong way. But I do find I, I find this really interesting about what users uh, expectations are about Apple's review process, about what, you know, uh, what their phone is doing when they ask for certain permissions. Like, I think about this a lot when, when I have to set my apps to ask for permissions. Apparently, uh, the chat room just gave me a, a link. To a story from last year, RIMS, who's Kick, which is a, a messenger client on iOS and Android, by the way, after uh, they found out that it was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Kick had breached contractual obligations based uh, blah, blah, blah. Apparently what they were doing is uploading a contact list. This doesn't actually say in, in great detail what it was, but uh, in fact now... Uh, it's in court. So, I, you know, maybe this is not an uncommon thing, but maybe it's also un, not unreasonable to get upset about it and say, hey. Yeah. But again, I think I think we have to go to harm. Right. So what are the possible harms here? Um, I, I, you know, if there were a breach of the data. Well, yeah. If they sold right. uh, my contact list to anybody. That's a pretty big harm. Not, not, not sell. I mean, I don't think Path would ever sell. I think that 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 is well, obviously. They could. The yeah. They could. Well, are they asking the rights? But even if there's just a breach, well, what if they're right? compiling? What, what if they compile a, a mailing list and sell it to a spammer? But you see, that—that's the thing, Leo. That's where we get to. That's why this is the the Dana Boyd rule: uh, regulate the behavior, not the technology. So, if you try to regulate the gathering of data in full, you can't know anything, and you must forget everything. Right. Um, that becomes very difficult. Whereas you say, listen, 
if 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 you if if they gathered this data for the purpose of giving you a service, they allowed no access to it. There was no breach. They did nothing else wrong. The harm of them having it on their server is de minimis. If they purposely then go and sell it, or if they treat the data carelessly and there's a breach, that's where the harm lies. So the regulation is more in what did they do wrong to you, than my God, everything that could go wrong. Right. So, so to me, it's it's it, as I say, it's de minimis that they have my address book on their server if I trust them to hold it well, and if they don't do anything bad with it, there's no real harm there. There's potential harm, but there's not. If they do, you're right. If they sell it to a third party without my knowledge, yeah, that's harm. What about uh, Pinterest? Pinterest. Can that can that fad go away before I have to actually use it? Well, <laughs> I feel the same way. I'm maybe so it will. I am not a Pinterest fan. I am a member. Because I I try everything, and uh, I've often wondered why people are so crazy about it. Somebody said, just you know, ask a woman. But I don't. I think that's sexist. We're not going there again. So the idea of Pinterest for those who have yet to been exposed to it, and it isn't, by the way, public. And yet, uh, I I read a thing a couple of weeks ago that was like the number eight most used site in the internet. I mean, it's huge already, even in beta. Is that you just use it as a, a digital scrapbook of things you think are cool. In lots of different categories. And you can browse other people's, there it is, other people's child-free and loving it. You can browse other people's uh, Pinterests. It's 23 months. I didn't realize it had been around so long. It's got a lot of content. Refer, it, it, uh, as, as I said, it was recently reported, this is from this article on digitaltrends.com, that Pinterest drove more referral traffic last month, more referral traffic than Google, Reddit, YouTube, LinkedIn, and MySpace combined. Where, who what? said that? That can't be right. <laughs> that that cannot. Right. Maybe be they right. mean Google uh, Plus. Even so. Even so. Yeah, more than Google Plus. Plus, it seems like all the gifts from Google Plus just put together in one place with nothing else of value. But I'm being. That's exactly happy. what it is. Uh, this is from Shareaholic. According to Shareaholic, Pinterest drove more referral traffic to sites in January than Google Plus, Reddit, YouTube, LinkedIn, and MySpace combined. Uh, yes. On what? What source for that data? Uh, referral traffic is 3.6%. I'm not sure. Shareaholic is a sharing app, I believe, so it could just be through Shareaholic. So it could be some small subset. Some subset. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. I, I agree. Call BS. For everything. Yeah. Call BS. That's right. Like, See, this yeah. is what's good. We have a, a panel that can actually say things like, that's ridiculous. I'm going to summons Clay Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I call <laughs> BS. Information diet. Check your sources. <laughs> so, but here's an interesting thing. LL Social did a little digging on where the money is and look at the referral links. If you pin something in Pinterest and it links to an e-commerce site that has an affiliate program, Pinterest will modify the link Ooh. to add their own affiliate tracking code. Clever. Very. I mean, that makes them a billion dollar company. Bada bing. But yeah. I, and again, this is probably not illegal or wrong but they oh. probably should disclose well and it, yeah but i don't I, yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with that and you've seen gentleman right that's the that's yeah the i join i'm trying to join gentleman because i'm a man but even there i get so there's a picture i want to shave share, shave share sa shaving tips with other yeah, fellas yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so pictures of guns and burgers thank you very much is it it's like a metrosexual community shop. or uh, that's a good question i'm uh, they haven't let me in are you are you a, a, a member of gentleman no, I've asked for a, a, a... I just learned how to watch the Super Bowl. It's a, I'm not it's, allowed it yet. It's a mint of manly things. Mustache a pomade. of a shaving mug. <laughs> what what Weber Performer me? Charcoal. I don't know. Don't you... Th I want to join this site. I'm sorry. Beer. Barbecue. Sh you know, shoes and foosball. I don't know how to make a Moleskine uh, uh, iPad well, case. Some all of that right, stuff all right, is on it. Pinterest. If you look, there's it's some very grills. Pinteresty. There's some. It's just a subset of women's it's world. Pinterest for men is what it is. That's all, and I think that's good. So, but back to the question. So they're ge they're generating uh, uh, using a service apparently called Skim Links. They're generating revenue. I think this is brilliant by adding affiliate links. Now we, you know, when I, I, I when I link to something on my website, I try to remember my Amazon affiliate code. Not so effectively but that's a great way to uh what if twitter did that twitter absolutely could do that there's nothing i mean Good. there's no reason why they can it's their domain you're posting links to it you know i mean twitter already shortens your links using their tico right. uh service and you, you can't opt out of that so it i bet you would make me. a lot of money really quickly i think that would be probably pretty pretty controversial 
Uh, but is it wrong? They Are they? Is there any loss to you? No, it's it it, it takes away no. the advertising uh, clutter. Right. Um, right. I mean, what would be nice is if, and this is what I think, you know, this this is a column that I thought was was full of horse pucky, uh, you know, arguing, um, I forget who it was who did the column saying, it was the New York Times, Nick Bilton, said, well, well, where's our money from Facebook? Because all this money they got, when it's our content, would you prefer that they just charge you for the service? Yeah, you're, you're getting value out of you and your data. Right. Um, you're choosing to post it on Pinterest, not your blog. Right. So I, I think it's a way to, in fact, I'm going to steal that business model immediately for all the local sites I work with. Um, <laughs> well, there's this, wonder, this service. will do this for you. Uh, this looks cool. They, I'm going to, I'm going to check oh, them what's out. What's the name of the service? Skim links. <laughs> Skim links. Well, they go through all awful. the links on your site and they add affiliate codes. Here's the, uh, unlock the cash in your content. <laughs> and so what proportion do they give you? Oh, I think it's That's your code. Oh, it's your code. Oh. I don't know. What, See, I would up? like it if they if they already went and did deals with all these places, and I didn't have to do all that. Well, they'll even didn't. add a, a, a pop-up that shows uh, price comparison and stuff. I mean, this is actually pretty sophisticated. So huh? the question is, if you post a link to Pinterest with your own Am or Amazon or whatever affiliate ID, ah. does Pinterest overwrite yes. yours? Yes, I with believe theirs? that's the case. Oh, oh see, have... that's not okay with me. Uh, for for me, I feel like it has to detect. You know, if the user is is adding their own affiliate code, then I think that you know, if I'm going to post a link to Twitter. To, you know, recommending a product on Amazon, and I use my Amazon code. I expect that that's going to be maintained. Um, if there's no code, then I wouldn't have a problem with Twitter adding their own. Right now, there's that's an argument, though, Gina, isn't there? That that if you and I do this myself, I use affiliate links myself. But if you do that, uh, there is an argument in in kind of journalistic wonky circles that says that that puts you in a conflict of interest that you're selling the products that you're writing about, and thus you're a suspect. But Pinterest right. is not a journalistic right. enterprise by any means. Well, no, but only that was from saying neither that, that, that. Am I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've heard I'm, that. I, I, I do it too. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just presenting the mm -hmm. argument. Not. Not. That's arguing. a good point, actually. Yeah, I mean, if I work for the New York Times or a paper where I have to worry about those kinds of conflicts, I mean, I mean, I, I, I've just kind of developed you know, my own sort of personal code of contact, code mm -hmm. conduct, and that doesn't. I use affiliate links on my blog. Louis, I don't think that's an issue. Louis DK says in our chat room they do not modify if there's an affiliate code, existing affiliate oh. code. Oh, that's good. So if they're respectful of users, the user's content in that way, then nope, I've got no no problem with that. Yeah. Um, um, do you actually make more than coffee money with it, Gina? Uh, no, not too much more than coffee no. money, but it, but 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 six, I think but we, uh, enough. We made I think twenty thousand dollars last year. Oh yeah, I'm not, not near that. I don't remember. I, I I saw the amount. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. It could be from also search links in other in uh, the tech guy has uh, Google ads in the search results. It uses Google search results. I don't know if the Twit site does. But it's more than coffee money. But I don't. You know, it's funny because I don't see a conflict of interest because it's not. I'm. It's. I mean, in the case of the New York Times, they're, the New York Times is allowed to do it, not their reporters. Right. <laughs> right. So I mean, the, the, the conflict of interest is the New York Times wants it to accrue to them, not to their reporters. Yeah. Right. That's the conflict of interest. And most of the time I'm mentioning my book, which, right. you know. It's our own is, stuff is, that we're selling. Yeah, it's, it's my own stuff anyway. Yeah. Or stuff from, you know, from friends that I, that I want to. That I Apparently. Want to because it's good. Skim words is used by Technorati, Cosmopolitan, uh, Ning. Fatwallet.com, so at least they claim them as clients. So there. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to talk about my really fat phone. <laughs> it's fat, baby. P -H -A -T, we also fat. fat. We'll also talk about Chrome, finally, on Android. And I'll give you a little demo on our... This, I should give a review of this, too, the hot Asus Transformer Prime. It's all coming up in just a moment. But first, a word from Citrix... The folks who do the great go to my PC, G O T O M Y P C dot com. Go to my PC. It's amazing. It lets you access your office computer. Here's a scenario you're heading out to the airport. You got minutes to spare. You know you're going to miss the flight. And suddenly you realize, God, I forgot my presentation. It's back on the office computer. Now, what do you do? What will you do? Well, I'll tell you what you could do is turn around and miss the flight or. If you've got an iPhone, an Android phone, an Android tablet, you just log on to GoToMyPC on the free GoToMyPC app. Securely, you are transported like magic to your computer, even on your Android or iPhone. 
And there it is, all your stuff. Send and receive email, access any network resource, copy the file that you need. It worked uh, like on this uh, on this Asus. It works great. You see, and it's weird because you're you're using an iPhone or a tablet to look at a Windows machine or a Mac. It's kind of it's kind of eerie. I want you to try it free for 30 days and see what that eerie could be for you. Visit go to mypc.com, click the try it free button, use our offer code TWIG. T W I G, not twit, twig, like a little branch off a tree. 30 days free. Uh, and then uh, that's for the uh, desktop app because you got to install it on whatever computer you want to access first. By the way, you won't need the IT department or anything like that. It's very easy to install. It takes uh, literally a minute to install. And then download the app for the uh, various platforms Mac, PC, iPad, iPhone, Android tablets. It's really cool. Go to mypc.com. Use the offer code TWIT. These guys are great. Twig. Twig. See, I did it. See, I have a feeling there are people out there who will do exactly the same thing. They will type in a uh, TWIT. No, use a G. Twig. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, let's see here. So should I tell you about the phone? Is this a good time to show you the note? Yeah, sure. Yeah, show it to us. So, um, so this is going to be available uh, February 19th this week. Uh, AT&T will offer it. It supports AT&T's LTE network. This is the European unlocked version, and there are some differences. The unlocked version has an Exynos processor. The AT&T version will have a, a, a Qualcomm processor. I think they're roughly the same speed. This one has a physical home button. The AT&T will have the capacitive buttons, capacitive buttons across the bottom. It does come with Gingerbread 236. Although they say that they will upgrade to ICS. Samsung says it's going to upgrade almost all of its latest stuff, like the Galaxy 2 and the Nexus is already ICS, and I think this will be ICS. But what I like and what I'm interested in this, this is a phablet. A phone. <laughs> phablet. <laughs> I like, is that a great word? A phone that you could really kind of approximates a tablet experience. In fact, like, do the over-the-shoulder because you can get a sense of how, how legible and big it is. Now, I'm an old man. And so this, you know, you don't need reading glasses for this. In fact, um, stuff is really easy to see, to read. Uh, let me put up pull the Kindle up, uh, app up and you'll see this is, this is actually in some ways, isn't this the test for a phone is if, would you want to read a book on it? Yeah. Um, and in fact, it's, it's uh, now I can make it different uh, type sizes, of course. I'll make it bigger for you guys because you're a little more distant. Uh, but it's totally... It is kind of, a, it's 5.3 inches. It's intermediate between a tablet and a phone, but it's just, it's big enough. I, I'm, I've am i read quite a few pages. Very comfortable. It, it'll fit in a jacket pocket, surely, but will Watch. it fit in a shirt pocket? Watch. Now, these this is a Scott E vest, so everything fits in these. Oh, things. yeah, so it's... But no, yeah. it fits in your breast pocket, no problem. What's different from this like the, than the Streak, which is also a big kind of phone, is it's so thin and it's very light. Battery life is, you know, pretty typical. It is a bigger screen, so it's going to use up more battery, but it's got a bigger battery, so it's kind of a push. I, I'm getting roughly 10 hours pretty regularly, kind Ooh. of iPad battery life out of it. Uh, but I don't talk on the phone. And by the way, talking like this probably does look a little goofy, you know, holding it to your head. But it, but most, uh, lately, the, I very rarely, I was, before I bought this, I thought, do I ever actually hold my phone up? Very rarely. Almost always I use earbuds, Bluetooth, or I'm in the car. and I. You know, Bluetooth if you think about it, when the first phones came out, it was goofy. Yeah, it's goofy anyway. Yeah. Remember right. when phones were little? There's a guy named David Borman. used to be the bureau chief at CNN in Washington. And now I think he's uh, running uh, current. Uh, but um, he was a, he's a big guy. Yeah. Uh, Don Imus used to call him Moose Butt Borman. And uh, <laughs> he was, uh, he was the uh, NBC liaison producer uh, for the site, the show we did uh, for MSNBC when it launched. And he, this, so this was to 1996, 1995, and phones were really little by then. He had a little Sony phone that was literally, it was this big. It was so little that you folded out the uh, thing to talk into. And so this big fat guy was holding this little phone. <laughs> that looked dumb. <laughs> yeah. It looks dumb, you know. So this is, I don't think that looks, I, now I have a big head. I don't think that looks bad. That doesn't look too bad. Can no. you use it with one hand comfortably though? Yeah. Well, maybe, and again, that would depend on hand size. And I have talked to women who say, "Oh no, I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to use this. Uh, it's too hard for me to uh, type on." But I, you know, I, I my thumb reaches all the way across, so uh, that's not a problem. But you would more typically do it like you would with a, with a Galaxy, where you do the two thumb 
uh, thing. It has it comes with as all the Samsungs do, which I really like. Uh, comes with swipe, which I'm I'm very fond of. Uh, so let me write a tweet here. Oh yeah, um, Seismic look, looks nice on that screen. That's a big old tweet box. Look how and look how there. big this text is and everything. I like swipe, uh, and I just think it's very easy. Uh, to use it, you know, it's it's Android, so you know it's you're familiar with it. It's just a bigger screen, very snappy though. One uh, the one point four gigahertz dual processor, so it's it's very snappy. Um, it's, it's swipes very quickly and easily. Uh, I like it. I'm very I've been very happy with it. You get a lot of widgets on that screen too. I'm a widget guy. Yeah, I like widgets a lot. I've been missing them in iOS. This is a widget that shows the moon phase. Yeah, that's what you miss from uh, iOS is you can't customize the, the screen at all. I even have a customized, uh, you know, I have a live wallpaper that's the weather. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like that like that weather widget right there on a lot of phones, that would take up the entire horizontal space of your home right. screen. But right. it doesn't on that. You've got no, two it's just widgets this little, side, side. That's widget. That's a widget. This is a battery widget. So I see the battery life. I No, I like widgets, and I do. That's one thing I think that iOS doesn't do uh, very well is the, is the it, I miss the widgets. Uh, Leo, I should know this, but I got a new Android phone, and it didn't carry in all my apps and all the stuff. Isn't it supposed to just carry all the stuff from any? You know, that seems to be, uh, Gina, I don't know what your your experience is. That seems to be kind of hit or miss. It does uh, seem to be hit or miss. My wife yeah. just got a new phone, and she had a similar thing. She said, aren't I supposed to get all my apps? And I, and I was like, yeah. You know and what I, I do? And I couldn't remember if you have to opt into the syncing uh, somewhere. It does other. sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. A lot of the yeah. free apps won't uh, transfer over, but your paid apps. Well, I got a I got a well. fix for this, by the way. So you get App Brain. You all know about App Brain, which is a yes. great little app. And one of the things App Brain will do, by the way, that talk about crazy live wallpaper. I got a, an aquarium on here. Let me add a, a blank screen so you can see it. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, App Brain will do is it will. Where is it? There it is. It will. Um, <laughs> That live wallpaper with all those widgets and that big screen. Look at that. that. Battery lasts for a and, good five minutes. And I can feed the fish. Here, come here, fish. <laughs> Eat. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I could just sit and watch this all day. So, it's like an app designer's nightmare. <laughs> it is. Oh, God, you guys, this is so trashy. This is the equivalent of having 18 fonts on a, on a report, on a book report. <laughs> but I, I love it. I'm trashy. And with that screen, actually, I'm getting decent battery life, although I did buy three batteries. The battery is replaceable, so I have three. Are, are you loving it because you're, a, you're an ICS snub? I hate ICS. I know. That's why. Are, is that part of the reason that you're you're chortling that you love this one? Because it has no, I think it's going to get ICS, and I'll put ICS on there. I think yeah. now's the time if you're worried about ICS to buy a phone with physical or capacitive buttons, so that you at least will have those buttons. Um, and then when ICS moves the menu all over the to hell and back, you'll still know <laughs> there's a menu button right at the bottom, as it always has been and ever it shall be. <laughs> that's the I only thing that bugs win. me about ICS. Everything else I like, but that really drives me crazy. Sorry, Gina, you were saying. No, no, that's okay. I appreciate strong, well-formed opinions. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think it makes sense because uh, the menu button on my Nexus, Galaxy Nexus, sometimes it's at the bottom, sometimes it's at the top. You always have to look. Yeah. Where's the dot, dot, dot? And it's, and it's an ellipsis, sideways ellipsis, which you can't see anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I, I love the apps. The apps are much improved. I really miss the better browser. You know, so anyway, but I, but uh, so anyway, to say, to complete the thought, this is actually, I like a big screen. And I think what's nice about Android and the real advantage Android has is the variety of choice. The choices, you know, Apple calls it fragmentation. I call it choice. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's true. And uh, boy, everybody thinks I'm wrong about ice cream sandwich. Fine. I, you know, I'm just, just my opinion. It's called opinion. It's not called fact for a reason. App Brain. That's right. Let me finish the thought. So you download App Brain free app. You put it on there. You sync your phone. Now, what App Brain does, is you have to log into your Google account. What App Brain does is creates a list of all the apps on any phone you have. So this comes up a lot for me because, as you know, I have about eighty Android phones. So I have a list on App Brain. I'll show you of all my uh, all my different phones. And what you can do, it's really makes this very simple. The App Brain has a fast it's called the Fast Web Installer. And so what you do is you say, okay, let's uh, let's go to my phones. Where's my where's my apps? Here they are. So uh, right now I only have two phones on here. I have the Galaxy S2 and the Sam. So I can look at all the apps. These are this is what's installed in the Galaxy S2, and I can check all if I want, or I can go through them one by one, and then I can copy. I can take these and I can add them to a different phone list. 
So it will move all these apps to that phone. Uh -huh. And then, or just the apps you want. And then, and it doesn't care if they're free or not or paid or not, whatever. Then it just, uh, then you can, you, you, so as long as you have. So in case, that takes about two years. Yeah, right. Exactly. No, it doesn't take any time. Uh, on a Wi-Fi, maybe take uh, an hour to have that phone be identical to the one uh, I started with. You could also use titanium if you've rooted your phone and back it up. Um, but this this is a very simple way to move your stuff over. Gina, you use AppBrain because I, I follow do. you. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the other thing you can do is you can follow people, see what they use on their phone, and copy that to your phone. So here's Gina's list of stuff I don't that know she's. If I've been, I haven't been diligent about oh, re dear. installing it. Uh oh, am I? Is it? Am I empty? No, there they are. Okay, so here's apps on her phone. So if, all you have to do is install it in sync. And so if I see something, I, oh, the conventionist, I don't know that. Let me add that, and I press install, and it installs it on my phone. That's pretty sweet. That's another thing Apple won't do for you. So there you go. And, and it, it seems to be, at least you can do this manually. If you didn't do it automatically for you, you can at least do it manually. And I do, and I, I'll, I'll give a thumbs up to the note. I think Tony reviewed it. Tony liked it right on, he reviewed it on Before You Buy. He Did loved he? it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a great, I love it. it. Now, I didn't show you the thing that Samsung wants me to show you. It has a stylus. <laughs> oh. Which is so stupid. They call it, they said, don't call it the stylus, it's the S Pen. It's a stylus. <laughs> the spin. Spin. So there's a few things the spin will do that are, I guess, kind of cool. The, the, the phablet spin, yeah. Well, it's even worse because it's not only is it a stylus, it's a stylus with a button. Oh, please. And, and uh, you know, but the nice thing is if you lose it, you don't really care. But anyway, so it, <laughs> so I, I have never I've never pulled it out. But there are a couple of things it will do. And some people might like this. It, at CES, they were really uh, highlighting the fact that you could draw with this. And they had little, they called it the... Uh, Galaxy Note Atelier, and people were drawing with it. But if I press the button and double tap, it opens up a note. This, and you could do handwritten notes as well as text typing. If you see a stylus, they blew it. Well, that's what Apple, that's what <laughs> Jobs, Jobs said, right? Yeah, that was Jobs' is a famous quote, right, yeah. about a style, yeah. the possibility of a stylus with the, with the iPhone. So you could type, you can draw, you can erase. I mean... I get for, you know, it, I am not that left brain or right brain. If I were, maybe I'd be really excited about that. If you press the button and you hold, it does a screenshot, which it then opens up in an image editor, and you can annotate it. So you can crop it. Uh, let's get the right cropping tool. Let's get the rectangle. I can crop it and say, yeah, let's just copy this part here. Okay. There, but Oops. I pressed it. It's cool. I'm done. There's that part. I can annotate it. Let's pull up a pen and say, look at that. Wednesday, it's going to be cloudy. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then I can save it. And I can also share it out, you know, to Twitter and all the other places. I guess that's of some use. I, I, You know, they have some apps that are designed for the S Pen. There's a crayon physics game that you can play with the S Pen, stuff like that. But. Something that uh, Tony did that I thought was genius was uh, at CES, he uh, got an autograph. He took a picture with right. two celebrities. You could and do that. They autographed uh, yeah. his photo on the note. Yeah. This is, this That's is, cool. This is one of my favorite apps. This is a Zen brush app that's very beautiful. Oh, that's nice. I mean, I bought a stylus for my iPad for, for an art an app. So, art well, app. So, that's the thing. When people say stylus, you know, you've, you have to use a stylus, you blew it. There's a huge market in third-party styluses for the iPad. Oh, yeah. So yeah, maybe, you know, maybe not, right? And it's, they don't work as well as the Spen, I can assure you. No. That's the nice. The press are sensitive and very nice. Uh-oh. License check failure. This is the problem. Okay, I didn't mention this, but this is my big problem. This is the unlocked GSM version. I put a T-Mobile SIM in it. It doesn't have all the right frequencies. It only does edge on T-Mobile. And it and it often thinks I'm not online because this stupid piece of crap doesn't do uh, doesn't do 3G. So get the uh, AT and T version. Or if and Tony did this, he got an AT and T SIM, and with a little uh, hacking of the uh, APN uh, uh, addresses, you can make this work with uh, AT and T's 3G. Not their LTE, but their 3G. If Verizon released this as an LTE phone, I would be so all over that, all over that. So I uh, I think this is what's great is you got the choice. Leo, do you have the new Chrome on it? I don't. I have it on. You want to look at it? I have it on. Uh, we just did a demo. Let's not I do another it. demo. No, no, I'm not doing a demo. You have the it on your... I, I have it. 
But the problem is that it says you can sync all of your tabs, and I only I don't get my tabs synced. Oh. Did you sign in? You have to sign yeah. in. I'm signed in. Um, I synced. And so it does all your tabs. Well, oh, it needs a passphrase. Uh, no, wait a minute. It's syncing now, I guess. So in theory, it's going to look just like my Chrome at home. Which sounded um, great, but mine doesn't work that way. So everybody, tell me where the menu is, just out of curiosity. Where is that menu? Uh, oh, there it is. See that? <laughs> there it is. It's up there. Nasty Leo. It's up nasty, there. Nasty There's the Leo. memo, uh, the menu. So it hasn't yet downloaded. It looks like it hasn't yet downloaded my bookmarks, but uh, it, it will. So it looks just like Chrome. I love this. Uh, for a tablet, you want Chrome, right? Yeah. You do. Are they both WebKit, Gina? Yes, they're both WebKit. I don't think that this this doesn't support Chrome extensions yet. Oh, maybe Is that's that okay. Correct? Okay. Well, I have extensions. I, and I look, mean, it's, it's identifying use, as mobile, which really kind of is annoying. But The reason why I use Dolphin is for the LastPass extension. Right. Dolphin is great, and the LastPass extension is fantastic, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm to the point where I'm basically useless on the web without it because right. it's it's just it's all got, my passwords. It's got passwords, right. yeah. But this is working. I mean, uh, this seems to do a you know a decent job. It's just like Chrome, to be honest. Now, this is on the gate. By the way, I love this. This is the Asus Transformer Prime, the uh, newest uh, Asus Transformer. So it docks into this keyboard and blah 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 becomes a laptop. Um, this and that's and that's and that and an operating system on that is uh, ice cream sandwich. I see. Yes. Oh, wow. Right. Ooh. Yes. Yes. You can drag and drop and make folders like you do on the phone. Um, so yeah, if you yeah, there you go. How much does that one run? Uh, Five hundred bucks. And if really? you, if you get the uh, the Docs hundred fifty, so for six hundred fifty bucks, you, you get a laptop. Now it doesn't. This one doesn't have three G, but it does have Wi-Fi. I've been using the um, Logitech iPad keyboard. Right. Which is yeah. very nice. Falcon makes one. A lot of companies make these. Yeah, th this one's yeah. this one's nice. I like this one better. It's seventy bucks. You know, yeah. so it's it's okay. I just bought one of those. Oh, you did? So it's on, it's on its way. Yes, being shipped. I finally I gave in. I felt I felt kind of dirty about it. I'll be honest. Well, I gotta oh, I say, know. Steve Jobs is just you know he's you he's bought a stylus kidding. for your iPad and you you bought a keyboard. Why did you just buy a laptop for crying out loud? <laughs> exactly. No, it's true. I, I know. I, I really like I resisted it, it for a long it works time. Pretty well. But uh, I like to I like to write, and you know the iPad really is kind of this nice distraction for your environment. Right. It travels really nicely. It's lighter and and just easier to carry around. And you can you know have the choice of taking the keyboard. I don't know. I, I'm glad you like it though, uh, Jeff. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. I, I held out for a long time and finally gave in. So this yeah. has an incognito tab, which like a real Chrome, which is nice. That means you can browse and surf uh, completely anonymously. Um, let me see if in the settings because it, it is identifying itself as a mobile browser. So uh, you, if you if you put your passphrase in, which I thought I did, but I'll I'll do it again. Um, it will uh, it will sync apparently. Um, most of this looks looks pretty much the same. I sure would like to change its identity though. Maybe it's in developer tools. Enable tilt scrolling. Enable USB web debugging. Oops. Um, That's gonna be a popular feature. Really? Why? No, I'm oh. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness it has that. Good, thank goodness. Whoa. That Privacy. Yes, you know, I'm, mine isn't syncing either to my desktop just yet. It might take some time, and I'm, I'm surely signed in on both. Right. Uh, this is cool. Is this news? I just, I just looked at Amazon because I was going to look up that. I was going to put that on my on my wish list, and they say they've they've just wrapped up another deal with MTV, Nickelodeon, Comedy Central, yes. TV Land, and VH1. Big story, or Amazon Prime. This is they're yeah. going right after Netflix now, and in some ways, uh, they might have a little bit of a head a, a leg up on uh, Netflix. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber now, the stuff you get for free from Amazon streaming from Amazon is pretty good. And if you've got you need a Roku or a, uh, what what else does it? Boxy Box, Google TV, obviously will do it. The Google TV crashes a lot on me, the Amazon Prime streaming. It's using really? Flash, and it crashes all... And I have the updated Google TV, the Logitech review, uh, and it crashes all the time. But Netflix never crashes on me. So Prime Instant Videos is going to be... Yeah, they did a deal with Viacom. So lots more stuff. Jersey Shore. Oh, thank God. <laughs> There's some quality content. Thank God. It's MTV. 
That's at the top of my information diet. Oh, come on. <laughs> you want this. You know you do. No, this does look good. I've actually never watched this show. Is it good? Uh, no, no, no. no not I know Snooki. We just missed Snooki. She was at uh, Live with Regis and Kelly. I'm sorry, there's no Regis. Live with Kelly um, the day before we were there. Oh, we missed Snooki. Oh. I would have met Snooki. Instead, I met somebody from Twilight. I don't even know who it was. Oh, yeah. Watner or something like that. I don't know. It remember. wasn't. No, I heard it was. No. You're bugging me. I heard it was. it was Ashley Green. It was. It was the young ingenue. It was Alice, right? Yes. The one who, yeah. Again, no idea who she was. He and Eileen. With yeah, the we, we got it. We yeah. got it. We got it. <laughs> Walked by me in the hall. I just noticed she was short, beautiful, and had a lot of makeup on. <laughs> well, so did I, so... Leo, you did great. I had that was I so much fun. Out of watching that that segment, did you really like that giant boombox? I did. I thought it was so great. Kelly, I love that Kelly was working it, and I loved, loved all it. your faces when she accidentally paused the music. <laughs> you all sort of looked around, like Wait, she broke broken. it. You broke it. <laughs> that was fun. That was really fun. Um, it, Rocky, just call me Rocky Laporte. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Moving along, Google Screenwise. New program pays you to surf using Chrome, but you have to give up your privacy. But it could not be more obvious what you're doing. I think this is great. You could sign up at google.com slash landing slash screenwise panel. One thing I wanted to know is, will it, inco will it, will it ignore an incognito for you? Ah. Oh, that's an that interesting question. That to me question. is the key question. If it, if it did that... I mean, obviously, you could game it, but you wouldn't get a very good web experience. But if you really wanted to go to something that you just did not want anyone to know about, then and you got paid five bucks otherwise. I'm guessing that the ScreenWise browser extension has an on-off switch. Mm. I could try it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what happens. You install a, a Chrome extension. They don't give you nothing for it. 25 bucks in gift cards. Come on. I know. Is well, it my... So, so what's their... I don't even understand fully why they're doing this since they already know so much. They want to know how everyday people use the Internet. It says, what we learn from you and others like you will help you improve Google products and services and make a better online experience for everyone. It could be simply watching what you click. and uh, So they want, they want to know the whole Internet, your entire experience. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. They're using a company called Knowledge Networks uh, to do this. Um, every three months. You get, it's, oh, this is even worse than I thought it was. It's well, five it bucks for signing up. And then five bucks every three months. Yeah, up to $25. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. This, this, is, um, this extension must transmit information uh, about the web surfing that, you, that they can't get, you know, from... Exactly, just, that's right. You have to be 13 or older, so it's obviously, uh, you know, it's... It sounds like they're just ex expanding their focus groups research. to the user groups. Yeah, it's like yeah, a focus research. group. Yeah. And you do it not for the money, I, I would hope. If that, if, that make, if that makes a difference in your bottom line, what is it, a buck, a buck 33 a month? See, what, what would be smart about it is if they fed you data back. Or if, if they had a feedback loop to say, well, you, you go to, you know, these unusual sites or you do this or you do that, that might be something I'd sign up for. But five bucks. I'm not gonna yeah. Lou, it's a Big Mac when you sign up and a Big Mac a month for up to five months, up to four months. <laughs> Leo economics. That's, you got to talk in the language of the people. <laughs> You know, I use a Rescue Time, which is a, an extension that you can install on your browser and also a, an app that you run on your desktop that analyzes all your activity and breaks it up in, in terms of productivity. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really that's really interesting. So that's kind of what you're talking about, Jeff, is like giving you feedback on your behavior. Yeah. Similar to, to I Fitbit turned that or sucker off. It was depressing. Oh, yeah, it I was would, depressing. Uh, yeah. Was it too hard to see your Well, when average? I was doing it, it was like farm, you know, more Farmville. Really? More farm more Farmville? <laughs> 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 Again with the Farmville, it was saying. Um, sometimes you don't really want to know what you do with your time. No, I don't. I definitely don't. Uh, now, this is uh, something we talked about on um, Security Now um, this morning, I believe. Uh, Google's Chrome browser is going to stop using something called CRL or Certificate Revocation Lists. Oh, I wish we had Steve to explain this a little more. I yeah, read this article. This to and I didn't get it either. We should just rerun the damn thing. <laughs> so the idea is, uh, it's just a broken service, to be honest with you. The idea, and it's been, it's been around for ages. Uh, uh, most browsers uh, use it. I think Firefox also is abandoning this, but Chrome, Chrome is. So the idea is that 
uh, as you know, in order to validate the site you're on before you do a transaction, a secure transaction, uh, the browser checks the certificate and sees if it has a legitimate certificate that matches the site. So you go to Amazon.com. Amazon presents you with a, a using public key cryptography. So it's a secure certificate saying, yes, I am Amazon.com. It's been verified by a trusted third party, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there is a, uh, a service that browsers are supposed to query each and every time um, the online certificate status protocol um, saying, is this certificate, has it been revoked? And that's relevant because, you know, remember there, uh, the, the service in um, DigiNotar in uh, Holland that was uh, compromised, was a, a certificate authority, and they'd been compromised. So they had to revoke all those DigiNotar certificates. So right. your browser would, uh, would accept it until it was revoked. So it's to check to make sure it's, uh, it's revoked so that, this, you know, if you got a certificate, it's going to be legitimate. The problem is... Um, the way the server works, if the server is down, for instance, the, the, that you're checking with, it'll just say, hey, you know, I'm down, but I'm sure it's fine. Just go ahead. Mm. So it's, it's, and so Moxie Marlinspike, who is the best named hacker in the world, uh, wrote a, a t example program called SSL strip, a tool that says that does that. It does a, it doesn't changes the certificate, does a man in the middle, and then pretends that the certification server is down. And so the browser goes on happily. So, so it's useless. It's useless. It's, Essentially. It's, it's flawed. Um, in his uh, blog post, uh, Google researcher Adam Langley said, while the benefits of online revocation checking are hard to find, the costs are clear. Online revocation checks are slow and compromise privacy. They add 300 milliseconds uh, as a median time and as a mean of almost one second to page loads. So it actually discourages people from using SSL. And since it's unreliable, it doesn't do anything. There's no point. So that's basically, I believe I've encapsulated Steve's information from the show today. If you really want to hear a, somebody who actually understands this, listen to Security Now. We, we just finished it. It'll be on the, uh, on the interwebs soon. Thank you for explaining that, Leo. I think that Thank makes you. sense. Yeah, I mean, the speed issue is, yeah. you know, a kind of second? breaks the golden rule of Chrome, right? You know, anything that takes so long. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah, that's way too long. Yeah. Way too long. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Google has said, we have, yes, we have the patents from Motorola. And if you want them, we will license them at a fair price. This is, uh, this is from Stephen Musil, writing at CNET.com. Google apparently was about to send out a letter in the next 24 hours uh, saying that they're going to use FRAND or fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory terms if you would like to license any of these patents. Well, don't they have to do that for their Android partners? Ah. Right? If, if, unless they have that kind of, and, 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 of, of, of fair view of, of having the patents, then all of their Android manufacturers are going to have a fit. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that the EU has yet, yet to approve the merger. Yeah. And might not if they didn't say this. Apple actually uh, has uh, sent a letter to the European Telecommunications Standard Institute asking that the standards body create basic guidelines regarding patent licensing so that there is a kind of a standard, uh, you know, suggestions for appropriate royalty rates and stuff like that. So the Google acquisition, I guess it's approved in the U.S., right? But not yet approved of Motorola. It's not yet approved in the uh, EU. This might be something to make it go better. Um, are you ready for Android powered smart glasses? I can't want to buy a pair now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Google glasses will have a built in heads up display. I don't believe this for a minute. This is from nine to five. Google can't possibly be true. I think that's what I thought about the car. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so true. we Good found point, out yeah. a couple of weeks ago that Apple, when it hires an engineer, assigns them initially to a fake project. And waits to hear if the engineer leaks that information before they actually assign them to a real project. And that, that process can take months. You can actually work at Apple for months on a project that's bogus. I'm convinced that's what this is. <laughs> it's just something Google made up to assign sketch, sketchy new recruits. Hey, yeah, put them on the, on the glasses project. And then if they see a leak, they know. I don't know. I can't. 
That's just so depressing. For Except I want it. That'd be the most depressing thing ever. I want ever. it. Yeah, I want it, but too. it just it sounds like an April Fool's joke. The glasses, uh, which apparently resemble Oakley uh, sunglasses, you know, that, that wrap around. The, that may be the thing that takes it over the edge, yes. Yeah. Uh, said to have an integrated transparent display for one eye and a built-in front-facing camera. The latter could be used for augmented reality. Yeah. So you'll be looking through one eye's normal, and one right. eye you're looking at with a heads-up display. Arms. And you could, yeah, you, you could see stuff. I have a researcher I'm working with here at CUNY named Nick Diacopoulos, and he got his PhD at Rutgers, and I think it was there where his uh, advisor, maybe it was, no, it was probably Georgia Tech, I think it was, I used to be at MIT Labs, and he showed a picture of him just, just, just yesterday where he had a little, and he'd been doing it for years, like 20 years. He has a little tiny display here attached to his glasses. Wow. And he wears it all the time, and he has a one-handed cord uh, keyboard. That's so nerdy. And he said you'll talk to him, and suddenly you'll see him typing, and you'll see the one eye kind of look over there to the right. <laughs> and he said it's so wonderfully weird. He loved the guy. I love it. it. Was, he said it was just so weird because you don't want to, is he typing what I'm saying? Is he looking up something, you know, on Google to see what I'm saying is right? You know, what, what is he doing? <laughs> I am not know? mocking this. Uh, I would buy this in a heartbeat. I don't care if it's five grand. I will buy it. Yeah. But I'm just thinking I don't think it exists. So according to this story in 9 to 5 Google, uh, the device will use speech and head tilting for text input and control. So if you thought that was weird. See people walking down left, the street. Left. Head gestures. Right. right. Uh Nine to five Google suggests that Google Glasses product could soft launch with a pilot program later this year, <laughs> making the product available to selected number of testers. They would follow the model of the Chromebook launch, which was preceded by the CR48 test unit. I want a CR48 Google Glasses. Oh, man. Google I.O., baby. Google I.O., we're up. going, right? We're going to get our... <laughs> Give out the prototypes. <laughs> They're here somewhere. I know. They're under the seats. <laughs> well, that would... It... It's a bit of a wet dream, but 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 Google wants you online all the time, everywhere. Well, there you go. I'll be on. I, I'll do it. At, at Davos, Marissa Meyer, um, a mayor, uh, uh, bragged that Google has caused uh, twelve million miles of of turn by turn direction. <gasps> wow, right? that actually seems so, low. Shouldn't it be higher? I think it, maybe it was billion. <laughs> million I seems low. Billion, billion, seems billion. Low. It's got to be billion. Be if McDonald's has served a billion hamburgers, You're right. A million, 12 million miles, it'd be like, I'm sorry, this is a flop. We're going to close the MAPS project. It's not working. That's right. A billion. Uh, yeah, it was billion. That's my number of the week. It has to be. It has to be oh, yes, you're right. It has to be. It's his number of the week. Don't I'm going to opt my glasses into oh, just not. live streaming everything I see up into Google Maps. So we'll just have street Look, view of everything. They, every, Gina, they billion, must give billion. us glasses because you and I were the perfect. You'd go to the White House. I'd go to live with Kelly. We would map yes. everything. Yes. I will promise to wear them at night in the everywhere I go from now on forever. And you can give me five bucks a month. I'll take it. Maybe. Wow. Wouldn't that be funny if that, if that, uh, oh, here's your $25. And oh, by the way, here's the glasses. Crowdsourcing <laughs> sneaky images. <laughs> yes. We, we, we didn't mention this. Yes, you get a Big Mac and Google Glasses. I want them. Well, you, you know, Maps now cars. has the internal, the inside things, right? It has inside. Yeah. I used it at, uh, uh, where was it? Was it CES? Yeah, I was using them at CES. CES. It was cool. Marissa said that there's a pride uh, on the team that within the Google campus, they can put you not just in the room and not just on the table, but at the seat you're in at the table. I love that. Because they use uh, the Wi-Fi identifiers to triangulate you. Wow. See, these Google glasses would really help. Wait a minute. There's no way... The privacy issues alone. Well, you're um, choosing to do it. No, but you're choosing to look at somebody who's not choosing to do it. Well, you, you can do There's the a camera your in it. You just have your phone. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> I, Get used to it. Just I, give it. I doesn't bother me in the in the least. No. But I just think that the uh, there's no way this is a real story because there's no privacy in public. Well, well, yeah, but you could, you could wear it in the bedroom. You could wear it anywhere. Oh, well, that's a different matter, yes. You could wear it in the, everywhere. You go in a store. You could wear you go, it in the sauna. Yeah. You can't, you know, I mean, if I go into a Las Vegas casino with a camera, they will they will bodily, they tried to last year, throw me out. If I go into uh, uh, many stores with a cell phone and try to take pictures of the products, they have signs now in stores that say you may not take pictures in this store. So if I go in with glasses that have a Google logo on them and a camera... <laughs> I'll I think this has stop. to be bogus. Well, I'm envisioning right now, because I'm told the show really is watched at Google. 
But there's a whole bunch of snickering engineers at Google. We got them. We got them. We planted that. We got them. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> They're really talking then, about it. Then watch out. In a month, it'll be out, and we'll say, oh. Hey, cool. They, have a I wouldn't be surprised if there's some, it, it may, you know, it could be somebody's 20% or, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if there is such a thing inside of Google, but I, I do think that there's no way because of the privacy issues alone that they really, I mean, people are scared of Google, a, a, a cadre of a hundred thousand people walking around with cameras on their heads that send the images back to Google. Right. I think the camera is the piece that goes too far. What if it didn't have a camera? What if it just, then you don't have uh, augmented reality. No, you don't have augmented reality, but you could have maps and you could have all kinds of things. Oh, I see the camera. Mm. There's a camera. Wait, do you need the camera to have augmented reality? Apparently, they look like the Oakley Thumps, according. according. Yeah, did you see the picture? <laughs> oh no, I didn't. See that. I've had these. I actually had these for. I, I I put them on Regis. He loved them. Um, those are a few years old. Okay, the heads-up display is only for one eye and on the side. This is just like the MIT guy. It's not transparent, yeah. nor does it have dual 3D configurations. That's fine. I, if it had 3D, I'd throw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Head seriously. Tilt. Headache yeah. forever. Yeah. So, uh, all, by the way, all of the technologies to do this completely exist. This is, this is not, like, Absolutely. innovative. And getting it to a reasonable price might, might be a challenge. Wait, what does I it mean, cost to have a... You're not, you're not buying glass. You're buying a little yeah, paper projector right. onto something. Yeah, cameras are cheap. This, I mean, everything's yeah. cheap. You know, maybe it isn't that expensive. You know what? We remember at Le right. Web, there was that guy wandering around, the, the Swiss guy wandering around, and he was wearing the Motorola. It had Android, I think. Yeah. And he had a little ocular. Mm hmm And he was shooting video with it. And he was shooting video and walking around. What is that sound? It's uh, a car alarm outside. Oh. Uh, hey, so buddy, your car's being stolen. All right, that took care of it. I, th I hope that I hope this is real. Oh, I, love I do too. I and obviously, it. the camera doesn't have to record and upstream up, you know, upload its recordings. It doesn't even have to be there. I mean, you can get a lot of information just from GPS. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. But, uh, no, I'm saying you can make it so that it's not an invasion of privacy, but people are right. still going to freak out, right? Yeah, I yes. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's bad. Don't get me wrong. I want one. And Google, if you're listening, Gina Hook and I, up. we're perfect. Hook hey, us up. Hey, okay, hey. you too. New York City, center of the universe. I'll report yeah, yeah, it. You City know what I really better. want? And this was something that they took out of Google Goggles, but 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 Eric said they have it, is the facial, facial. recognition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, facial recognition. So if I walk up, because this happens to me, it happens all the time. I walk up to somebody. I know I know them. I have no idea who they are. That's well, yeah, Jeff it's especially Jarvis. bad for you because you may not know them. I know so many they people. Right. I, I, I developed this terrible affectation. I have many. Uh, but this one I developed when I was a columnist in San Francisco, and my, and my face ended up on the news boxes and the trucks. And so everybody knew you. If you say hi to someone, that is an ellipsis that assumes the name. Hi, Leo. Yeah, right. Right. So I couldn't say hi anymore. I started saying howdy. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody says howdy, Leo. They just say exactly. howdy. Exactly. You never howdy. And that was enough. And so that's what I, to this day, I say howdy. That's not everybody in California says howdy. That's not an affectation. Is it? That, in I, fact, I remember that when I first came I here, I thought that was so nope, strange. Maybe you started it. Maybe it was Jeff. I ran into Jeff one day. <laughs> um, the meme and there. So is that true? If you say howdy, you don't have to say that person's name. I don't name. think so. Huh. Or you could do like Paul Harvey say, hello, American. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not doing that in, in the diverse city of New York. I'm going to get in trouble That's true. big time. No, 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 no. Greenpeace says the Google is the least uh, unecological. I, I, these, this Greenpeace list is always seems to me be a little bit uh, political. Yeah. Uh, I like Wired's headline: Greenpeace hates big tech but wants to kill Google the least. <laughs> um, there's a list of this, this is, or is it an app? Is this an app? It's a 50 page report. Everything's an app now. Yeah. Jesus, you want to do a shopping list? They make it into an app. <laughs> there's a leaderboard. They call it the Cool It leaderboard of uh, of tech companies. Blue is solutions, green is energy impact, yellow is advocacy. Google has lots of solutions, a little impact. They actually do have a lot of impact. Any Anybody like Facebook or Google that has server farms has a huge impact. But they score uh, 53 on the leaderboard. I don't know what that even means. Is that good is or bad? Is Apple not on the list? Yeah, because Greenpeace hates Apple, right? No, I don't well, see Apple on this list. Maybe Apple made a deal. Is this just an energy? Is this maybe just an energy list for? Well, a, Apple's a got a server farm in North Carolina. They use some energy. They got the cloud. 
Facebook launched that uh, that completely uh, Oregon data center that's completely solar and so forth. The report dingle, dings uh, Google for killing its solar energy program. Remember that? Larry, it was one of the things Larry killed yep. in November and the uh, renewable, uh, renewable energy stuff that they were doing. They were doing some really cool stuff. We did a green tech somewhere. If you look on the Twit site, the green tech piece that we did on Google where we interviewed them, we took a look at all, like they have electric cars, all that stuff. It was really interesting. It's kind of sad that they're not doing it anymore. Um, P, uh, Dell and HP saw their marks drop, but the biggest loser is Apple, which, like Facebook, is once again omitted from the list because they've seen, Greenpeace says, we've seen no effort from Apple to lead, unlike Google. Oh, I see. So this is a list of people of companies Good people. that are doing it well. Right. That's why Apple is not on it. Apple has a lot of reach into a very loyal fan base, but we don't see them leading environmental advocacy efforts. Greenpeace has always is, has hated Apple for years. So there you go. Um, is Facebook, according to CNET, there's an article. This is an, I thought this was kind of interesting. Let me say, pull this one up. Da, 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 da. Is Facebook accurately counting its daily active users? They claim 850 million <sighs> users, active users. Certainly this is relevant if they're going public. I, I sided this. This was a uh, oh, Andrew Ross Sorkin column. This is a New York Times column. Got it was based it. on an Andrew Ross Sorkin column. Andrew is very, very bright. And the thing is, what I said on Twitter is if you read this story from the end, you say, my, how smart of Facebook. They, everyone should be doing this. Because what they're doing is they're distributing themselves around the net. And if you do, what, the, he, the beginning is they count as an active user, somebody who hits like in a day. They say 485 million. Right. So that, so the, well, they didn't go to the site. They hit like. Okay. I get it. But then he points out, but, but they did interact with Facebook and Facebook got valuable data about that person and about that content out of that person. Gee, shouldn't we all be doing that in media? Yeah, I guess so, the point is they didn't see an ad on Facebook, so you can't count that as a visitor to Facebook. They don't see site. an ad on Facebook mobile either. Right. You know, um, I think that's uh, fair. They say these people are using Facebook. They're engaged. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fair. And I think that it's, it's, it's an old Comscore media view of the world right. to say that you have to go to the site. No, that's you where Facebook is very innovative. They're exactly. putting Facebook, splashing Facebook on everybody. Peanut butter that, strategy. Spreadable, man. Spreadable. Totally agree, but would you say? But if someone's asserted that visiting a website that has Google Analytics JavaScript dropped into the HTML is interacting with Google just by visiting uh, the site, and I, and I wouldn't agree with that. And I think that I mean I agree that you know clicking a like button is right. is interaction with Facebook. It's 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 an action. You know you're associating with a brand. You're signed into Facebook. You're sending them data, but you're also sending Google data when you visit a site that has Google Analytics installed. Right. The difference is that in one case you're doing it passively, in one case you're doing it actively. Exactly. So when they use yeah. the word active, I mean, they did have the description in there. I mean, Andrew didn't, you know, come up with any uh, scandal. And again, at the end, he came back around and said, well, this is smart stuff and this is really good. But mm -hmm. I, I think it was an effort to kind of the headline up yeah, scandal. The, mm -hmm. the headline is bogus. Uh, in right. December, Nielsen Company, which tracks usage on the internet, counted 153 million unique users on the Facebook website for the month. Although Facebook says it had 161 million active users. You know, that's a small difference that yes. you see all the time in counting. Uh... That's U.S., the by York, the way. The New York Times has an odd, the, the, the Sunday New York Times particularly. Last week, I, I tweeted out five links that were kind of anti-internet, anti-progress stuff. It, it's getting to be a drumbeat, really isn't it? Yeah, it's it getting really to be a drumbeat. Is. It really, really is. I, I wrote a piece this morning on the blog, really boring, wonky, we won't go there, but, but um, a guy named Dick Toffel, who is general manager of ProPublica, former assistant manager editor, assistant publisher of the Wall Street Journal, wrote a piece arguing that the original sin of newspapers was that we didn't charge. And I've been in that argument a million times. But the interesting thing he said in there that I, I then hooked onto was he said that, that there, it was a cultural issue in his view, and I don't agree with this, that was East Coast versus West Coast. Which is another way to say the Sopa Pipa argument of Northern California and Southern California, which is, you know, tech versus IP, uh, content versus platform, disrupted versus disruptor. And there's kind of this kind of argument now that, that we, the techies, are the siren call leading people down the wrong road. Because we lead them away from their past and, and, and where they do things. And so, yeah, I think there is almost a drumbeat going on. Uh, and that's what, you know, the privacy stuff and all this stuff is, is 
um, the revenge, the, the nerds got their revenge, and now the, uh, the the disrupted are trying to get their revenge too. Back on us. Uh, moving on, we got a couple more things, and we're going to get your uh, tool tip and pick of the week. We're running out of time, so let me jump these in here. Sky, I figured you'd have something to say about this, uh, Jeff Jarvis. There's a great, uh, there's a guy on Sky News uh, on Twitter. At, it's at Field Producer, right? Mm -hmm. who's been doing breaking news uh, as a field producer on Sky News, and it's not all Sky News. He's just like he's just like a one-man breaking news. It's like Andrew Carvin. He's like a one-man breaking news engine on Twitter. Um, apparently, Sky News has told their, their reporters that you cannot retweet rival journalists or other publications. You cannot retweet the public. You can only retweet other Sky News reporters. You cannot retweet about subjects that aren't on your beat, and you may not have personal tweets in your, quote, professional accounts. Numb nuts. <laughs> yeah, talk about clueless. Wow. Yeah, absolutely clueless. It's amazing. There, there should be a collection of, of, of numb nutty social policies that companies have. This one, this one does kind of beat the, beat the well, army. Especially when you have such a great case study with this guy um, uh, who's, who's, who's got, I, I don't know how many Twitter followers he has. And, it, and in the long run, it redounds to the benefit of Sky News, right? Yeah, but they don't get it. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same as Andy Carver and Anthony DeRosa at Reuters is, is really very, very good as well. Um, and if they want to give up that, it's the same argument before is don't link out. Right. Yeah. Stupidest argument made it's in true. media. Media get that all the time. I have a piece coming out in The Guardian on, on Monday arguing that, that the biggest mistake we made, the original sin, is that we think we're in the content business. We think we make content. What business are we and, in? We're in the relationship business. Oh, damn. The Facebook understands that content is a tool to get you to generate information nice. by yourself. I should be nicer to people then. <laughs> <laughs> I've been blowing it. Not Leo, you are most definitely in the relationship business. Everybody is here because they love you. No, it's true. I am. They have a relationship yeah, with you. each other. Right, chat room? Yeah, I love you guys. You guys yeah. are beautiful. Let's hug. Paul McCartney doesn't like you guys. He is pulling tracks from Spotify and Mog and... All of those streaming services, RDO, uh, Rhapsody. So has Coldplay, Tom Waits, even Adele. What? Um, McCartney apparently did this in 2010 from Spotify. Uh, this is not the Beatles music. This is the this is the the guy who used to be with the Beatles whose music isn't really that good. Yeah. <laughs> I was on a Delta flight. This was really creepy. I was on a Delta flight and they were blaring music into the cabin. You know how like they, you feel like they're trying to calm you as you get on the plane by blaring music into the cabin. And uh and it was uh the weirdest channel I ever heard. It was it must have been a cover channel because they had all these well-known songs by people not the original artist. So they had silly love songs, Paul McCartney silly love songs by somebody who wasn't Paul McCartney. I mean, they just tons and Why bother? Why bother? It's not a good song. I, I, I'm sure it had to do with rights. Yeah. I'm sure it had to do What's with music? rights. Isn't that, wasn't that music going back? But it was, it was it, yeah, I guess music did that, right? But this wasn't instrumental. This was like full production numbers of well-known songs, but by somebody else. Does music still live? There was a um, Coldplay song. Maybe it's these guys. Oh. Milo Zyloto, the uh, latest Coldplay album, will not be on, uh, they said wouldn't be on Rhapsody. It is now. So it's, I think, I think people do this and they, and they regret it. McCartney is streaming his upcoming concert on iTunes. But, he, but he's controlling that. But he controls that. By the way, I just looked at Rupert Murdoch's uh, Twitter account. What's what's and, the old guy up to? And he said about this time this was happening, I have nothing to do with Sky News. Oh, wrong. Doesn't he own 40% of Sky News? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wrong. Eh. <laughs> it is. I have nothing to do with Sky News. <laughs> Some, I think Brian Hogg has to do a puppet Rupert Murdoch and just say his tweets. Great game. Great for New York. Feel a little sorry for my Boston friends, though. Well, that's a great idea, doing dramatic readings of Rupert's tweets. Yeah. I love that. You have to do it. Does he still have an Australian accent, or has that become Rupert, Yeah, he does. The Rupert yeah. doll. The Rupert. Gordon Brown deserves much more credit on your... I can't do it. I won't do it. Uh, moving along. A plug for Jeff. Yes. Uh, so I'm doing an economist debate on the value of sharing. If you go to economist.com slash debate and my uh, well, this is, opponent, Do they do this a lot? This is a great idea. They do this every week. They do this every week. You and Andrew Keene, huh? Oh, Both me and Andrew Keene. And Keene is having fun going off and trying to stack the deck. 
So I want to stack that. I don't care about the vote, but do me a favor. All of Twig, go there and vote. Prove your power. Prove Andrew Keene for the antisocial twit that he is. He's a friend, too. But go, 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 just go vote. I don't care. So, so the proposition is the House believes that society benefits when we share personal information online. Jeff is, of course, supporting that. Andrew Keene says, now it's a terrible thing. Yeah. I like so, Andrew. He's a funny guy. Andrew's a nice guy. And he's a friend. But but he's playing the game. He's trying he, to game it. Yeah. So what I want to do is, Twig, go game it, please. He okay? wrote the just, he, just game it. He wrote the cult of the amateur, and you know he's kind of anti. His new book is is digital vertigo. I'll give you a plug, Andrew. Oh wait a uh, minute. By oh, the way, sixty five percent on Andrew's side, and only thirty five percent for Jeff. That's why I'm saying because he's playing the game. He's going all over telling people to vote on it on Twitter or else. So I'm thinking, okay, fine, let's play the game. Wait a minute. It's not fair to use social networking to win a debate saying social networking sucks. Bingo! <laughs> somebody, somebody pointed that out to him on Twitter. You right. can't use Twitter, Andrew, or Facebook. No, you've got. Was... <laughs> Barat uh, left a comment on on my post on, on Google Plus, and then he came back and said, "Well, you can't have a, a a balanced discussion about social networking on a social network." And somebody else said, "Well, where are you going to have it?" <laughs> You guys like Keen? You, you're friends with him? You feel like he's... He's I mean, a character. I don't know he's him a, very well, but I feel like his work is like truly destructive. Oh, oh, and exactly it, it, kind it of what is. we're talking about. He, he's polemical for the sake of being polemical. He goes overboard for the sake of In the great of it. British tradition. Yeah, he does all that stuff. He loves to have enemies. He does all that stuff. Uh, he's not like that other person with the accent I'm not going to talk about. Um, Christopher Hitchens? Uh, no, no. He does right. remind me a little bit of Andrew Sullivan or Christopher Hitchens, where they're there's polemicists. As, they're polemicists, but but not as smooth. I mean, Sullivan and, and Hitchens are very very smooth. They're Andrew is yeah. blunt, yeah. very blunt. No, but, Andrew but makes enemies. Nice we guy. had him. He's we actually had him on a twit, and uh, and he was actually I thought he was spectacular, and and the chat room hated him so much. Really? He's begged to come back, and I said I just can't because it's just it. It, it we're, we were going to have. I mean, people pitchforks and t torches were going to be at the door, going. We want him. Is the staff the mods that day? <laughs> oh my God! It was. Remember that? Oh. He based, so chat room. All the more reason. Yeah. To show him what's what. Economist.com debate. I don't give a damn about the vote personally, but let's let's show Andrew the power of Twig. Yeah. No, I, no, I, I already told Andrew he can't come back. <laughs> so, so it's already up. 41%, and, and it's nothing yes. personal. He lives. He lives literally. He lives in Santa Rosa. He lives like just up the block. And and I and I at, at the time when I brought him in, I thought he's. I, I love him. I think he's a great. He's fun. He's kind of entertaining in that British way. And I thought he'd be great. Maybe we'll do a show with him. <laughs> this is great. Before our very eyes, the vote's changing. It's forty three percent yes now. Yes, <laughs> Twit Army <Yay>! attack. <laughs> <laughs> we are God twig. Bless you all. Let's just bring down the Economist site. That's what we want to do. Yeah, that's what we want to do. <laughs> oh, don't tempt me. Thank you for the twi thank you for the plug. Please, we, you can't let Andrew King win this one. No, no. Uh, Boxy is clashing with cable companies over Quam, clear Quam versus encrypted Quam. Um, BoxyBox, which is a really, I think, a really uh, neat device. Boxy stopped doing software. They're focusing on the box. And now they have a, a live TV dongle. Um, but uh, Time Warner and Comcast and so forth are upset. They encrypt basic cable programming, even though it's against FCC rules. Oh. It's against the rule. It always pisses me off. And you know when they did this? They did this when uh, uh, broadcast went from analog to digital, and they kind of used it as a little diversion. Oh, well, we have to go digital, too. Um, existing regulation, according to this article on GigaOM, uh, is not, uh, says you cannot encrypt basic cable. Um, so FCC is having a hearing. Uh, Boxy has filed multiple letters with the commission, met with staff last week. The cable, they write, this is Boxy, and I love Boxy, the cable company's real motivation to prevent you from being able to connect the cable from the wall directly to your TV or Boxy box, they want you to rent that set-top box for an extra 5 to $15 a month. And by the way, the Boxy box won't work with a set-top box, so then you have to get this, the cable company's DVR. The cable companies are losing subscribers every quarter. If they want to reverse that trend, they should look into building better products. <gasps> no. no. Reducing prices. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Let's not be communist. And improving customer service. Not going to the government asking for rule changes. 
I agree. Public knowledge supports them. Consumer Electronics Association supports them. Um, I, it's not a surprise. I think this battle is going to get really pitched, heated, and ugly in the next few years because the cable companies do not want to be data providers, and frankly, that's their future. They want to sell you premium content. They don't want you to be using a Roku box or a Boxy box or a Google TV. It's not in their interest. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we will get your tip, Gina, your number, Jeff, and I have a tool you're going to love in just a bit. But first, let's talk about a very important tool for anybody using Mac or Windows. It's a backup tool called Carbonite, C-A-R-B-O-N-I-T-E dot com. I'm going to be having dinner next week with Carbonite CEO David Friend, who is a good friend. Uh, he's actually an interesting fellow. He was a, straight out of MIT. He founded a synthesizer company you might remember called ARP. Everybody in that day, it was like the... 70s, early 80s, everybody used ARP synthesizers. They were, it was like it. Made a packet of money, retired, and then uh, had a daughter in college, as I do. And uh, she called him crying one day saying, I lost my uh, term paper. I, my computer crashed. And he thought, there's got to be a better way. I'm a, I'm a geek. I could figure out a better way. He created Carbonite, the whole idea, online cloud storage. This was years ago. This was before anybody was doing this. And make it affordable. Make it easy to use. Anybody with a Mac or PC for less than five bucks a month, you put Carbonite on your system. Whenever you're online, your data is backed up automatically, continuously, without your thinking about it. You can get to it any time. It is cloud storage, so you log on to your Carbonite account on any computer, your smartphone or tablet, all the platforms, even BlackBerry. And there's your stuff. There's your data. So it's all, you always know it's there. If a, the worst happens, restore is very simple. It's a great way to upgrade computers, for instance. Just law, you know, move your Carbonite account to the new computer, restore, and you're good to go. $59 a year per computer. They also have multi-computer systems uh, uh, programs, and they have a, a plan for people who want to do external drives. No matter what, the uh, go to the website, do the free trial. You don't need a credit card. You just need the word TWIG as your offer code. And if you decide to buy, use Twig again because you'll get 14 months for the price of 12. That's a good deal. I, uh, of course, when my daughter went to college to go full circle, she had Carbonite on that laptop. You better believe it. She still does. You got to back it up to get it back. So do it right with Carbonite. Use the offer code TWIG. Gina Trapani, your tip of the day. Tip of the week is for Android Google Voice users. The new update to the Google Voice app supports offline texting. Ooh. And I, I love this because I live in Google Voice and this happens to me all the time. I'll be on a plane. The plane will land. You know, we're on the jetway kind of going. Right. You can turn on your electronic devices. I turn it on. It doesn't establish a data connection yet. So there I am texting my wife. Hey, I'm here. I've just landed. Can't send the text. Uh, this new update, which I actually haven't gotten yet. They just announced this today. So I haven't gotten the update yet. But this, uh, this new, the new update to the app will let you send a text while you're offline. And then once you do establish a data connection, it'll send it out. Just like, just like email. That's interesting. So it's so, not an uh, up to the messaging app uh, uh, update. It's an update to the voice app. Yeah, it's, up to, it's an update huh. to the Google voice app. Exactly. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So if I launch, oh, Google Voice, Google Voice. like voice.google.com, not this talking, got it. Right, right, Google Voice. I was Voice, confused. The, the, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like voice.google. Oh. Phone yeah, thing. Yeah, So, yeah. This That's is good. Kind of yeah, I, just, I, I do really, that all the I time. I, now if they'd yeah. add scheduling texts, that would be cool. Yeah, and I, and I really want MMS. Google Voice engineers, yeah. MMS, please. I want to be able to send pictures, pictures. to Google Voice. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So you can, you can you're on the runway, you are not got a connection, but you can... You, you can, can send a text. Send a text, landed. and they'll send it as soon as you do actually get online. Exactly. Especially when you have to go through customs, and they won't let you do anything. Right. That'd be very right. handy with this note, which isn't online because of the T-Mobile thing. Your number of the week. Jeff. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, Gina, 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 Gina. You <laughs> saved me <laughs> to the rescue. Uh, she just so nicely, so generously, just put in a suggested number there. That's our Gina. That's why we love her. Uh, Forty-one percent of Super Bowl ad searches were mobile, according to Google. And, and as I looked at that, who searches on ads? Well, the numbers are, are, are substantial. A lot of people searched uh, on uh, Madonna and Clint Eastwood and Acura and David Beckham, um, you know, and on underwear, I guess, and, and so on. <laughs> or lack and of so clothes. so they said that um, uh, the Super Bowl ad searches rose 200% on desktop, 970% on tablets, and 2,700% on smartphones. Wow. Now, we don't have a number there for... Uh, phablets, but we soon will. <laughs> I'm going to call it a phone. I think it's a, if it has a phone thing, it'll be a phone. Oh, I love that. I think you've invented this. It's a phablet. I, 
I'm going to do one more number because I love you. I love you, chat room. I love you, uh, uh, Twit. The <laughs> number on, uh, on, on the debate is now up to 59% agreeing with my side. Oh, nice. Apparently... Andrew doesn't really have the clout he seems to have. It's just nobody well, this knew. this is the benefit of sharing online. Yeah. So, uh, next chapter of this. Well, he actually, he could argue, well, it was you did it with broadcasting. Well, he was, yeah. <laughs> he, try it with your social network. So Now, I guess I voted, so I don't get to vote anymore. But you, uh, it's economist.com slash debate slash days slash view slash 806. You social networking. Slash debate, you'll get there. Slash debate will give you the, the whole thing. Very good. You're going to win this around. one. You're going to win. But keep voting. You know, you can vote many, many times. They apparently don't care. 59 to 41. Look at that. <laughs> Which all says what BS these votes well, are. Well, it means anyway. he only had five votes. Exactly. <laughs> you can change it, but they do keep track of your uh, login. So use the incognito window to vote. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I am a bad, bad man. So uh, this is something that actually we just learned about. Another thing from Security Now earlier today, Steve Gibson, our guru on security, does a great show for hardcore geeks. He is a big fan of turning off scripting. Scripting is the number one way you will get infected by malware from going to a website. Websites often are infected themselves, even benign websites, by malware kits that run as uh, you know hundreds of different attacks on your system looking for vulnerabilities. The whole thing is mitigated by just turning off scripting or using an extension. Now, on Firefox, we've been talking about NoScript for a long time. It's an amazing extension. There is, in some ways, an even better one available for Chrome. This is called ScriptNo. And if you want to know more about it, do listen to security now. But here's the uh, this is the tool of the week. Once you add it to Chrome, when you go to a site, um, there's a little box. You see it's red right now. I can click on it. And it will tell me what th scripts, what things, what APIs are running. And then I can decide if I want to allow them this once, trust this site forever, block it, distrust the site forever, or just temporarily allow it. In this case, I'm going to trust chrome.google.com. So that allows me to use all the scripts on the site. This is a really interesting because it gives you a lot of information about what the site's up to. There's a lot of options. It's actually very powerful. If you are Andrew Keen, you might like... Uh, the um, <laughs> there's a little there's a little social button that says uh, block all widgets all social no none of that none of that in here where is that I, I get off it. my internet get kids. off my lawn uh, anti social mode see there it is right there always remove social widgets and <laughs> buttons even if whitelist just don't have them I don't want them but they're no good to me so this is a this is actually a great security uh, extension that is fairly benign. You know, sometimes these things can really get in your way, but I like this one a lot. Script No. Just Google it because it's a very long URL. Script No, if you're using Chrome. And by the way, uh, they're telling me that TheEconomist.com has become a very slow website. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? What, we're being attacked. We're being DDoSed from everybody all around the world. 64%. It's now gone reverse. Yes. Oh, Andrew's going, what the hell happened? <laughs> what happened? Wow, 6436. <laughs> what happened? I was winning. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. You <laughs> are the biggest loser. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for being here. We do this show <laughs> at 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's uh, 2100 UTC at twit.tv. Please watch live every Wednesday. It's really fun. Uh, you get a lot of extra stuff before and after. And if you can't watch live, though, don't worry, because we make it available for download. Uh, always make it available for download at twit.tv within just a few hours of the show. You can get audio plus a video. Uh, your pick. Do subscribe. That way you don't miss an episode. Uh, Gina Trapani is at smarterware.org. And uh, it's always wonderful to have you on the show, Gina. Thank you for being here. We appreciate Great it. Great show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great show as usual. And I'll be back uh, in an hour. Gina is going to be our guest. Yeah, everybody, everybody, come back and watch Gina on Triangulation. Jeff's yeah. already done it, so it's Gina's turn. You Great know, it's fun. funny because we see, uh, you know, you guys every week, and I forget that we have some of the most interesting people, the kind of people we look for for Triangulation, are our hosts. So, <laughs> for, for crying out loud, we should have had you on ages ago. So, I'll, look for, I'll talk to you in an hour. Great. Five, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern for Triangulation with Tom Merritt and uh, Gina Trapani. Jeff Jarvis is at buzzmachine.com and his new book Public Parts is a must read for anybody who's curious about public life including Andrew Keene 
Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Gina. Thank, Thank you, you all for being here. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. We'll get rid of that music. And if you guys have suggestions, Jeff and Gina, and well, we, the kind of music too. Yeah, we're going to get George. I think we might ask George Woods uh, to, uh, to write. Let's start right here. I've got the world's largest phone in my hands, and I love it. Except you have the new one. Oh, it's the the watch Galaxy Note. Note. Oh, oh, and I loves it. I love me some. Except I, I was stupid. I should have asked our talented all about Android team before I bought it. It doesn't work with T-Mobile fully. It's a uh, edge only, and I'm off really? and offline, which is very frustrating. Mm. Uh, but I love it. And if you know what? If Verizon came out with an LTE of this, I would buy it so fast. You know, I was uh, How was it different from the, uh, what, was the, what was the Dell one? The Dell? The streak? Um, streak was streak. thick. Yeah. Yeah. This, this yeah, doesn't feel really big thin. because it's like this thin. Is, it, is the screen the same size as the streak? Yeah. Five, well, actually, it's 5'3". How big was the streak? It was five. 5, I thought. 5, yeah. So yeah. it's a little bigger. Uh, and it's 1280 by 800. So uh, it's, it's, it's actually like a computer-sized screen. Is it ice cream sandwich? It is not, but I don't mind that. I know you don't. I'm just, I just right. said that to get... Uh, get it you has know, a physical right button. Look at this. It's got a physical home button just like the I missed uh, that. iPhone. Look at that. I mean, not merely capacitance. It's got capacitance and physical. Although, uh, like all the European Android phones, for some reason, it does not have a search button. You know, and I really like pressing and holding the search button. You can double-click this button, but then Vlingo launches because yeah. that's Samsung's touch whiz. I almost... Don't. Play Bob Dylan. It's, very, it's better than Siri, by the way. You can open apps. You can do a lot of stuff with it. It's really a lot better than Siri. Oh, but is that Samsung only, or is that... Now, that's impressive. That is. is. I mean, is that not, yeah. like, freaking awesome? And that's Samsung only? Uh, no, Vlingo you can download on any... Uh, oh, Vlingo is okay. Android, and Android. I mean, that is spectacular to be able to do that. Or say something like... Oops, I got double tap. I forgot. What would you like to do? Open calcul open calculator. Siri can't do this. So to be able to open apps is like great. Wow. Siri, Siri can't do that. Yeah. Uh, it will looks it do call home. Oddly large, though. I have to tell you, like looking at you holding it, it looks. <laughs> a I've weird. got a Hershey bar that I can talk into. <laughs> A Hershey bar. I think it may be wider than a Hershey bar. It's even. fat. Yeah, it's, it's a little stout. All right, let's do the show. We'll talk more about it. It's nice when you're reading on it, but I loves it. Gina, and I'll we have show old you eyes. You see, we're old, <laughs> and I have a massive head, so it's okay. <laughs>